to see him for the first time was scary. He was very red. I'd never seen a baby so small. And with everyone's encouragement here, obviously all the equipment, just amazing equipment, here he is now. I remember being uh, in a children's hospital and it was about my eighth day and I said to this mother, how's your little one doing? And she looked at me courageously, strongly and said, we've just had the worst possible news. And I just burst into tears and turned away and, and all I could think about was my little daughter. And being a father, I think now magnifies and I understand completely the role of Humpty Dumpty. How's he going? Pretty good yeah. so far. The rate of prematurity has been increasing, which again means that there's more babies coming into our intensive care units needing new equipment and care. And uh, the only way we can cater for that is to, to, is to increase the number of pieces of equipment that we have available. What Humpty is doing actually is giving a chance to children to live. When I look at my daughter, she's three now, but no one thought she would survive. But she survived because all the medical equipment, yeah, so gave her a chance to survive. Once I saw the girls, it just hit home what was going on and they had tubes everywhere and they were so little. You looked around and they're in two humidity cribs, which you know, they were purchased by Humpty Dumpty supporters and it's just, it's just, it was another world. That's been the blessing. That's given me, uh, I think, a much better sense of what's really important in life. And so much I've heard from other people when something goes wrong with a member of their family, anything else in their life is insignificant. One of our aims from the Humpty Dumpty Foundation has been to try and provide the right equipment in the right places at the right time. And uh, we're very close to achieving that aim, not just in the city hospitals, but also in the regional hospitals. I look after children in rural New South Wales, uh, the, the northern half of New South Wales. There's 20 hospitals that I'm responsible for. Most of those hospitals are run by generalist nurses and GP doctors. There are no specialist paediatric services available for children who live in these rural places. I had heard of Humpty Dumpty. I had heard that they were looking after metropolitan hospitals. So I thought I will write them a letter, which I did, and explained our situation and how difficult it can be for rural clinicians to look after critically ill children. We can have these children for six hours while we're waiting for transfer. Humpty responded immediately. They asked what I needed, they asked why I needed it, and they said, come on down and we'll talk about it. The amount of time that I, I leave a Humpty Dumpty function completely humbled by the fact that there are people with, with hearts that are enormous and the last four years alone they've bought $11 million worth of equipment, over 700 pieces of equipment and now it's even going further than that, it's international, it's two hospitals in East Timor. I took a medical team over there to have a look at what would be the best help we could offer. Again, we, we're always, we try to be so careful that when we do something, we're doing it in the right direction and the right way. And then we came back and we asked our supporters if they would help us purchase one ambulance that was a four-wheel drive, because they didn't have a four-wheel drive ambulance at the clinic we wanted to support, and also about $50,000 worth of medical equipment. And our supporters were very quick to come to the party. I remember Phil Kearns ringing me on Saturday morning, 22nd of October. And he just simply said, Paul, I've just run over my little girl, Andy, and we're in an ambulance and we're on the way to the hospital. And it was gut-wrenching. 
when we're arriving at the hospital and, you know, Andy's just taken away and we're panicking, we don't really know what's going on. And it wasn't till afterwards that we realised that in every piece of equipment that, that really helped save her life was um, donated by supporters of Humpty. Because of what Phil had been part of creating, um, which was the Balmoral Burn and the offshoot of the burn being the equipment that we'd been able to purchase and specifically on that day the equipment we'd purchased for North Shore Hospital because it was that equipment that the doctors and nurses were able to use that made the difference. The reality is if Humpty doesn't provide it a lot of the times it's not going to be available. Everyone wants to give, they have this amazing part of their the, you know, their soul that wants to help other people and often they do but they don't know where it goes. With Humpty you do know where it goes. It is so tangible, you'll know what happened. You can come and see the outcome and you can hear from the families that you've made an unbelievable difference to. When she arrived it was, I was so stressful. It's like well, what are we going to do, is she going to be alright? And just to see that she's here and totally formed and the equipment, without the equipment, wouldn't, you know, she wouldn't be here. I was so grateful.